the ocean is the cradle of life. Covering more than 70% of the planet, the oceans form the largest habitat on Earth. In its salty waters, evolution has produced a stunning diversity of life forms that we have only begun to uncover. Marine invertebrates, descendants of the founders of biodiversity in the ocean, have long inspired researchers. They have led to important scientific breakthroughs, from discoveries of cell division and insights into embryonal development to the fundamental function of neurons. Mikhail Sars was a pioneer zoologist born in 1805 in Bergen, Norway. He discovered hundreds of new species in the depths of the Norwegian fjords, where life was said to be impossible. His son, Georg Ossian Sars, continued his father's work and made important contributions to fisheries science. Founded in 1997 in Bergen, under the auspice of the Research Council of Norway and the University of Bergen, the SARS International Centre for Marine Molecular Biology continues the inspiring legacy of the SARS family. We are facing an unprecedented uh, climate crisis. We are uh, facing uh, challenges in terms of food security. The centre can provide answers to scientific questions by focusing on marine organisms. Those organisms are also instrumental for basic biology as they have been since the 19th century. But now we can start asking new types of questions in part thanks to the new technologies that have emerged in the past few years. CRISPR-Cas9 and in general genome engineering, you know, the use of microscopy to quantify uh, biological phenomena in live organisms. And finally, computational biology and computational sciences, data sciences, machine learning. And this is a structural change that is really transforming the field. SARS is an amazing institute. They go from molecular biologists to developmental biologists to evolutionary biologists to neurobiologists. This is a rather unique collection of expertise. The way I like to see or think about SARS is as a hub, if you will, between local, national networks in Norway and international networks. Many of my colleagues coming from all over Europe and the world uh, puts us in a really unique position to affect these, these interactions. My research is focused on the evolution of uh, animals. We discovered that the genome of Loicoplora was extremely small and this permitted to sequence the entire genome already 20 years ago. This animal is tractable uh, experimentally in such a way that we can measure very finely the effects of anthropogenic changes like climate change. Our research topic is the function of the nervous system. Marine organisms have only a handful, maybe a few hundred neurons, and also they're optically transparent, which means they're readily accessible um, to visualize under the microscope. We can find out the molecules that are important for transducing different types of stimuli, and we can also understand how nervous systems generate behaviors. Our research topic is to understand um, the evolutionary origin of neurons. One fascinating idea is that Potentially, neurons and nervous system may have evolved twice. So once in the lineage leading to ctenophores and once in the lineage to basically humans. And we're trying to understand the, the commonalities and the differences between the nervous system of ctenophores. I study proteins in the nervous system that mediate rapid signals between cells in the brain, for example. I'm hoping that my work tells us how human functions in the nervous system evolve and therefore gives us the understanding required to treat diseases better like anxiety, epilepsy and so on. In our lab we look at how food controls growth and reproduction on a sea anemone called nematocella vectensis. When you consistently feed them, so they're happily feeding, they can actually remove a piece of their body and from that piece they can actually grow an entirely new animal. We want to unlock the secrets of the sea anemone to help uh, human regeneration research. And then on the other hand, because they're very closely related to corals, can help us to find strategies on how to restore reefs that have been bleached. 
especially on this type of model organisms, I see no other place worldwide where I could do my research better. You actually have not only these animals, but you also have the knowledge of how to culture and breed these animals. Researchers uh, rely on live animal material, which we can provide throughout the year. We do water exchanges, we feed them with our own grown phytoplankton. We feed them and we clean them. Temperature and the conductivity and the pH is monitored every day to make sure that the animals are happy. When I think of SARS, I think of excellent science and excellent scientists. The recognition that training is very important for uh, SARS scientists at all levels. This is absolutely key. So the best part of working here, I will definitely say, is the culture. Just the people and the mentorship that I received here. I came into SARS as this nervous, fresh master's student, and I was greeted so well. Science is really thriving in, in SARS, but also in, in the context of with, within Norway. So I think it's a really good place to be as a young researcher. We have uh, amazing infrastructure, we have a, a very vibrant scientific community, and there's lots of social activities as well. Marine biology is just one of the coolest disciplines. I see the SARS a bit like a northern light on very important questions such as marine ecosystems, biodiversity. At EMBL, we're very excited about the future interactions with SARS to try to explore the marine biodiversity of this planet. It's in the name, we are an international center. So we are poised to be open to welcoming young researchers from all over the world.